always vouching for the downfall of one of our own. What is wrong with our minds? <laughs> Happy New Week! How is your week? Hey, wait, how was your weekend? Welcome. This is T with the Talkative. This channel is called T Means Talkative. There are other shows that they are off script and all. Go and check them out whilst you are here. But since you are here, do subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon. You don't want to miss any of our content. I bring you entertainment and tourism conversations. You know, we all love and enjoy it. So how about we get into it? This show has three parts. You have Four parts. We have Entercom, we have Sahin Jane, we have what my AI is saying, and then we have photo shoot. Today, Fela Makafu is wearing something nice. We'll talk about it. Some stars are wearing something nice. Shawale is also saying something to the FBI. Sarkodie and some promoters in the UK too. They have something going on. We'll talk about that. Let's just start with Entercom. Welcome. So this is Entercom, and you are having tea with the talkative today. I'm trying... Another thing I like so much is milkshake, but this one is strawberry, and I normally use cover strawberry because, eh, it's nice, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start with the big story. Shatawale has been trending for a video he's done addressing a certain conversation around Hajia Farrell and FBI and himself. Now, this thing, he made a video that said he was sort of, addressing people who were pinpointing him after there was a notice that came out that the people around Mona for real or the friends of Mona for real were going to be investigated by the FBI to see if they were also a part of the supposed syndicate that that exists. Now people have been tipping Shatawale or have been mentioning Shatawale's name to the FBI that Shatawale is a close friend of Mona for real so she too he has to be investigated and Shatawale has done a video to address this issue. It's a long video. I can't play it all, but I think this is a bit of the video and what Tawale was saying. Watch it. As a catcher for you, some stupid people for this country. Are you going to there? Then if Hajia for you get matter, then all you will talk be say, FBI, check Shatawale. Your mother, your father, your mother again, your father again. So that's a Shatawale trying to defend himself. It's a long video. It's a long video. I've seen it. You can go and look for it as well. First of all, Ghana, we have a problem. We have such a big problem. It's like when we keep saying that Ghanaians don't love each other, this is what we mean, no. So we we, yeah, we don't love people so much that the fact that Mona Farrell is in a problem, we are trying to get one of our favorites to, to be in a similar position. So that what? We'll be satisfied in our soul that, oh, so you can what, what, what who he is is not real or the one he has is not real. Like, why are we always trying to see that or why are we always vouching for the downfall of one of our own? What is wrong with our minds? Honestly, like, are we so damaged in our minds that we always want to see somebody in problem for us to be happy? Like, the downfall of somebody doesn't mean you're upright. So I really don't know if you, if you think that thing is, is, is the same level. Maybe Shatawale is into shady businesses but what do you profit from telling the fbi to also make his life miserable like what do you profit i really want to know also i don't think it is you your job to come and tell the fbi who to investigate the fbi if they've been following mona for real for 10 years you think it's a is somebody on their radar they've not been following him for 10 years like <laughs> are you the one to tell them also moving away from Shatawale and the uh, people trying to bring him down and what Shatawale is also saying it looks like Shatawale is also a photocopy of the kind of people that are trying to bring him in, in trouble. Because when he was also addressing the issue, I realized he was also trying to sort of two people in the video, trying to sort of shift some form of light on him to certain people where he was saying people that were taking drugs to the airport, people that people were, you know, they, they, they are on the radar at the airport for pushing drugs and all. You two, why? You are saying that somebody should not put a spotlight on you in a bad way. And yet you are trying to divert that same spotlight to other people in a bad way. Why? Is it that we cannot be happy for each other in this community that we always want to put the blame? It's like we are always trying to snitch to be... Why? Why are we broken as a nation? <laughs> as a nation like that? But whatever the case, I just feel like if Shatawale is on FBI's radar, it's not a guy. It's not us that put him on the radar. And something he has done that put him on the radar. And if Shatawale is not on the radar, what do you stand to benefit from putting him on the radar? Really, ask yourself. What do you stand to benefit? Let's talk about Sarko Deer and what some event promoters outside of Ghana are saying about him.
Welcome back. So this is Sahindrin, and Sahindrin is where I share my opinion on issues. Now, Sakwadi, Jackie, and I think some other artists who announced their shows outside of Ghana have also come out to cancel some of the shows, even though they are doing some. And there was a Twitter space by Joy FM Kwame Dasi to some of these events, Ghanaian events promoters in the UK and in the US. That was Dennis in the US and Alodia in the UK. And they were trying to throw some more light on what could have happened for these are stars to cancel their shows. Now, some of the points they raised is what I want to talk about. So according to Alodia and Dennis, these are some of the reasons that could contribute to the, uh, to the cancellation of Sarkodie and Jackie's show. First, low sales of tickets or tickets, low sales out there. Second, the fact that um, they might not be using the Ghanaian promoters in the countries they are trying to go to. And then the other one says the fact that sometimes when events like this is cancelled, sometimes the agreement they had with the artists that, oh, we are going to pay like 70% of the amount before you come in, or maybe they are not able to attain that. So the art artists feel like, yo, then why, if you're not able to fulfill your promise, why do I have to come to the event? So I might as well cancel. And then another thing that the event promoters mentioned was the fact that the Ghanaian artists, when they use them for shows, they don't really show their weight or put their weight by pushing the the uh, the flyers or even doing a video to say, say yeah, I'm coming. Because sometimes it really helps event, uh, ticket sales when the stars themselves say, do a video and say, we are coming. Now, let me talk about some of the things he mentioned. They mentioned the fact that low ticket sales and then the fact that they are not using GH promoters and all. First of all, um, yeah, I agree. The way Ghanaians we do our show here, it's not the same as the way outside things are done. It is all about the numbers. You might be big, but if they check their back end and then one week to your events, the, the, thing, the ticket is not going. It is money. They know you cannot pay for the, the event when you all, you might run at a loss or you might not be able to do the show at the end of the day. So they will rather cancel and then everybody will be out for the company bed. You get it. So yes, it could be a factor. Now, one thing I want us to drive from this low ticket sales and what Alodia was saying was the fact that if the Ghanaian artists do not want to use the events or the promoters, the Ghanaian promoters in those places, it will get hard. Their shows will will not work now or it will be hard for them to get the Ghanaian audience to come to such events now i don't know if i should be proud of this or i should be sad about it because it means that then our Ghanaian musicians their song does not appeal to other people aside the Ghanaians, whether in ghana or outside of ghana because really if my songs are appealing to nigerians Sierra Leoneans, and other african countries in in the diaspora i might not need the Ghanaian promoter Chin 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 to be on the project before they can unlock the audience or the Ghanaian audience for me. The reason they have the power is because the Ghanaians here, they are, it doesn't say, even if it's outside there, it's still the same Ghanaian audience that are listening to them out there, which is why if you are going to play a show, you will need that Ghanaian audience for them to be unlocked before you can, you can play or have a successful song. So what is wrong? Is it that our songs are not being pushed is it that these promoters who are saying that singing in Chi or our local dialects is not helping? It's really true. And that the fact that it's only the Ghanaian audience outside of the country that actually patronize this song. So you, you can see, say, artists saying, yeah, one million streams from the UK, one million streams from the US, but if you're not a Ghanaian audience, no, 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 Malians or some other countries out there. What really is the problem? Uh, is our really our song really not traveling out of our, our, our circles, or what is it that is really really going on? I I think I just want to know. These are questions that are coming on top of my mind, and also the fact that it looks like the Ghanaian audience or the Ghanaian artists want to sort of sideline these promoters and want to use the live nations who have been known to do big big events out there, and that. The thing is that, so you can use them, but you might not be able to get the Ghanaian community to come. That is the problem. So normally, for people that use these live nations, for Ghanaian artists, they partner with the Alodias the, and the, the Dennises to activate the Ghanaian audience to, to be part of the event. Now, my thing is, does that mean that with Black Sheriff, all the time that he was in the US or the UK to have his own concert, there was, was there a partnership with these people, the Ghanaian promoters? If so, Okay, 
If not, has there been a Ghanaian audience who has done a show without the promoters and did they work? What kind of audience did they get? I think these are all questions that are, are up in my mind, but very, very much so. I don't know if I should be proud that unless you go to the Ghanaian promoters, you can't get the Ghanaian audience or you can't have a successful show out there or I should be sad about it. These are my sentiments. Don't Welcome back. So I went to my AI and I went to ask it, what are some of the three African countries with the nicest waterfalls? Because I know that when young people, when we travel, we like to go to this waterfall, really waterfall, but see the waterfalls, you know. So I asked, and then my talkative, or my, my AI, I call it my talkative. It says that the three African countries with the nicest waterfalls are Zambia, Tanzania, and Uganda. And I was like, okay, so what are some of the examples of these places or these waterfalls in these three countries? And then in Zambia, two of the nicest waterfalls are Victoria Falls and Kalambo Falls. In Tanzania, two of the nicest waterfalls are Matiruni Falls and Kiku Lecha Hot Springs. And in Uganda, two of the nicest waterfalls are Sipi Falls and Mo Moshison Falls. So I guess we really did not make the list here, but hey, we still stand tall and we stand firm. As stars are posting their worry things, let's talk about it in photo sheets. When the share is wearing something, and there is, I don't think it's necessarily the wearing, it's the posing, the way she has posed, and the camera, and whatever she took. The word that comes to my mind when I look at this particular when the share look by the way, is looking double. Yeah, yeah, Samo. Jim, you we all for hit the gym. When the share, the word that comes to my mind is just this. When the share looks like a cover girl for a very posh magazine, either a fashion magazine or a lifestyle magazine. When the share looks like a cover girl, like she's the front, the, the cover girl for a magazine, a very exotic magazine and i really really like the pose on here the next person that is also posing is something very clean and dope is fella mccaffrey and when i look at fella mccaffrey this black outfit that she's wearing i think the way that comes with the whole look and her hair and her everything is stunning she looks so stunning in black the color of her hair the simplicity of the look the makeup charlie the proportion of the outfit, she looks very, very, very stunning. And finally, Amare is Amare, yeah. Yo, the fashion went trouble. When Ghanaian, other Ghanaian artists will ball break, Amare will pass and go <laughs> on the speed of a trim. Amare's look here gives me this feel. The first word that comes to my mind is this one sexy cowgirl. Like, she looks like that sexy cowgirl with her boots. I feel like if she had that uh, cow, cow, cow. Cow, cow girl or cow boy hat on. She would have been gone crying. This are the words I have. I am not a fashionista. I don't know fashion and all, but I normally get silly words in my mind whenever I see something nice or what somebody's wearing. I, I just decide to put them out there. Comment in the comment section below. What words came in your mind when you saw when the chef Ella Makafui and Amare? What do you think about this Sakodia cancellation of shows? And what do you think about Shatawale and the FBI thing? I really want to know. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't. This has been T with the Talkative. And if there's anything you have to do, do it now.